What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video. Now, all-in-one water coolers have been popular for quite some time and they've actually gained quite a bit of popularity in the past few years, but very few of us know exactly how they work, what's inside of them and what on earth is actually an all-in-one water cooler. We know what water cooling is, but well, what are the parts that make everything up and what is exactly inside this guy and uh, can we even open it? So today we're going to be finding out exactly that. We've got ourselves a Corsair H55 which is your basic Acer Tech style design cooler with a simple 120mm rad and also to a simple Acer Tech design pump. Now this kind of design that we have here basically covers about 50 or so percent on the market as there is definitely quite a lot of custom options out there in terms of all-in-one units but your Acer Tech design is kind of your original simple as they come water cooling setup. So today we're going to cut it all in half, we're going to angle grind the actual, uh, well, radiator itself and uh, see what makes this thing tick. So that being said, let's jump outside and start to rip into this guy. So we jumped outside and yes, first and foremost, this is not the uh, H55 we mentioned just before. This is the Intel Thermal Solution RTS 2011LC. Now this was a liquid cooler that launched with 2011 CPUs. So yeah, it's basically the same design, but unfortunately, it's not exactly the one we showed just a moment ago. Now, also too, I do want to apologize. Uh, we did have to switch to voiceover mode because the lawnmower in the background, well, yeah, was super, super loud. So just taking a look at the bottom of this cooler, it's essentially the same design as what we've been having before. So it looks like we can remove the tubes just on this side. So I guess there's not exactly that much to do other than, well, start to pull this guy apart. So just whilst we go ahead and actually pull this guy apart, the design that we are pulling apart here today is your standard Ace Tech style water cooler. Now this kind of design has been used for the best part of five or so years, probably even longer, and it is basically your essential water cooling setup. So the way that you can tell an Ace Tech design cooler is it looks very similar to what we're pulling apart here today, with the teeth around the actual water cooling head and usually the pump being round. Now the benefit of actually using one of these guys is it is a very standard design. So a lot of accessories like uh, video card mounts and also to a lot of CPU mounts are supported by this particular cooler. So if we take a look inside this guy, we see the heat plate itself. Now this guy's actually in really, really good condition. I was expecting this to be full of gunk. As we can see, those little micro fins are basically clear at this point and the gasket on this guy also too is in really good condition. Again, being such an old cooler, this guy's been around with me for about five or so years. This whole gasket is actually actually pretty good condition and the actual uh, block itself is also too in a decent enough condition. There's no real dirt as we can see right here, the fins look pretty much unblocked and uh, it isn't in the world's worst condition, I'm really impressed with that. However, with that being said, the uh, opposite side is uh, suffering some real bad corrosion on that interface there, but overall on the uh, back side where we've got the uh, little micro fins, not too bad. Now inside this guy, once we do start to drain things out, we do find a mixture of water and ethanol glycol. Now this stuff is really, really weird when it gets on your hand because it feels wet, it feels cold just like water, but it doesn't dry like water and becomes rather sticky when it does start to evaporate over time. In fact, if you actually watch the bench where I accidentally spilt some of this stuff on it throughout the video, you'll actually see that it basically stains the desk. Now this voiceover is being recorded about a day or so after I actually did that video and I can go outside today and still see that stain there. So this stuff is kind of a weird mixture right here. Now the reason why this stuff is used rather than just plain distilled water is due to the fact that there there are different uh, temperatures that these coolers can go into, whether that will be negative temperatures or really high positive temperatures, you need to have some sort of fluid in the sky that isn't going to be a problem when those temperatures do come up. Now my particular unit is about four and a half to five years old at this point and actually I'm expecting it to be in not the best condition when I do start to pull this guy apart. So before we do go ahead and actually jump into tearing this radiator apart, let's take a moment to actually look at and understand how this guy actually works. Now a lot of people just think the water goes in somewhere and it circulates somehow and then goes back out, but there's actually quite a few things built into this all-in-one water cooling unit. So first and foremost we have our reservoir up the top. So a lot of the time reservoirs look like this guy inside of a custom loop, but in this case it's just this little kind of top bulging section. There's also do a bit of a res down the bottom, but that's more of your return uh, for the water cooling unit. So what we'll do is we'll actually divide this up into quarters so you can actually get an idea of what each quadrant actually looks like inside of this guy. But 
we can kind of see here this little marking notch. This is where the radiator is actually divided in half because radiators are, well, actually in half by default. So the water comes in here through these channels on this side, loops around at the bottom and then back up the top. That's why we have the divider up the top so you don't have hot water then just going straight out the top which would just make a radiator completely useless. So there is a divider in the middle which will allow these four channels, yes, one, two, three, four, so we can kind of see uh, right here we have these four lines, basically they're where the water transfers from the top to the bottom, then re uh, returns back up through these four lines on this side and then out the tube here. Now these little fin arrays in the middle basically are your heat exchangers from those lines which again we'll cut up and actually see inside in just a moment. But that's a very basic way uh, that these kind of radiators work. And this is the same whether you're running a custom radiator for your custom water cooling loop. They're going to be divided in half. You're going to have some uh, lines coming down with the hot and then out through again to go down your cold line. Essentially, all radiators are designed this way. Not all of them have this kind of obvious notch. So this guy's like super obvious that there's a notch there. Even on both sides, you do see that notch, um, even top and bottom. But all of them will have some sort of divider in there, whether or not they are, again, uh, super obvious or super not obvious at that. But uh, let's clean the space up and uh, get into some cutting with our Dremel. So now we can go ahead and actually get started into cutting up our radiator. Now, I did mention I was going to cut it into quarters, but that uh, idea went out the window and you'll see exactly why in just a moment. Now, the actual cutting process of one of these AIO water coolers is actually a lot harder than you may think. Even though they're essentially just thin bits of aluminium sheet material and some what is essentially aluminium foil between them, these guys are absolutely solid and damn, the noise that it makes is also to pretty horrible. So yeah, not the greatest sound, but either way, we'll just mute that sound so you guys don't have to listen to it. Basically, we were cutting through with a Dremel and unfortunately, all my reinforced bits actually broke. And then also too, it turns out, I probably should have just gone down and grabbed myself my angle grinder instead of a Dremel. Now for me, I usually use Dremels on PC parts because they're smaller and Dremels make a lot more sense. But if you're gonna be cutting up a radiator yourself, uh, I do recommend either some sort of metal hacksaw or just grabbing yourself the angle grinder like I said I was going to use, but turns out I didn't use because I forgot to use it. Um, but yeah, essentially Dremel was okay, but as you'll see in a few moments of uh, actual cutting, um, it doesn't really go down too well. Not to mention I was expecting an awesome sparks show, but literally there was not even one spark when cutting through this uh, aluminium radiator. So I was a little bit disappointed, but either way, let's speed up the footage a few more times and get through the cutting process. Radio. So I've gone ahead and just popped upstairs to where we usually do our live streams, mainly because, well, talking in person and like holding things up is so much easier to do than uh, trying to organize voiceovers. So I've gone ahead and actually sliced this radiator in half, although not exactly the world's most uh, best slicing has been done if we punch in just a little bit with our awesome little remote. Uh, yeah, slicing could have been better, but point being, we've managed to slice it in half. I did want to go ahead and cut it in quarters so you could also to see the uh, tank splitting, but uh, we may leave that for another day because uh, I need to get an angle grinder out for that. I thought I had an angle grinder with a working um, uh, blade thing cutting the bob. Um, but turns out I didn't. So just take a look at what we actually got here. First and foremost, I do just want to point out, as I probably already have pointed out early in the video, uh, just how good condition this guy actually is. For about three, four, maybe even five years at this point, I think it's closer to four years, um, this cooler has been basically used quite a bit and then sat around for a very long time. And again, take a look at things like the fin array, the actual inside of the radiator, uh, inside the pump head and all that kind of stuff. Everything is in really good condition. In fact, things like the actual um, gasket around the, um, I guess, plastic piece where the hot plate used to sit 
uh, is in basically mint condition. I couldn't, I mean, now that it started to dry out, it obviously getting a little bit dry, but uh, definitely this is all in very good condition for, again, a five-year-old unit. Honestly, I thought after about five years or so, this thing would be toast, this gasket would be like crumbling away, this hot plate would be gunked up with stuff, and honestly, everything looks in really good condition. Now, whether or not this is just because original designed Acer Tech coolers were better designed than modern day stuff, or they don't exactly wear out as fast as I thought. Either way, uh, yeah, I'm really impressed to see just how good condition all of this stuff is in. But we did cut a cut. Uh, we did cut apart rather um, uh, the actual uh, radiator to see what was inside. So let's punch in and uh, take a look. I'll throw up some B-roll as well, but we'll just take a look in real time and uh, see what's going on. So we punch right in on this radiator guy, and we can see what's happening here. So essentially, we'll just start off with the tube. So the water comes in either one of these sides, inlet and outlet, both of these two. And as I did mention, we have this line here for the tank divider. So basically from here, one side is hot, one side is cold. So for example, if this tube uh, right here, this guy on this side would be our hot pipe. Basically the water would come in here and then travel down these one, two, three, four little vertical, um, I guess little passageways, corridors or whatever. And if we look inside of them, boom, we can actually see that they, they are hollow for water to flow through. Now, when I was flushing this thing out so I could bring it upstairs without smelling terrible because this stuff smells really, really weird. Um, basically, when I put the uh, hose onto the ends of these little tubes, uh, one side would uh, spit out four slots of water and the other would do the other four slots of water as well. So basically, sure they're kind of messed up and a bit mangled, but you can kind of get the idea uh, that where these gaps are is where the coolant inside of this guy would actually flow through. And because it's divided roughly in the middle here, these one, two, three, four would actually flow up to the top section of the radiator, which would be right here which I've also too got the other half of. So it basically flow up to this side right here, go into this top tank and then flow across here and then come back down this side, which would then again flow through these one, two, three, four here and then come out of this tube. It's a fairly kind of well used design at this point. And then in between are these little fin arrays, which basically conduct the heat from these thin tubes out here for the fan to actually blow through. Now, these things are super thin. They're basically aluminium foil at this point. In fact, I think aluminium foil is stronger than these things. They're really, really weak. You can bend them out. You can like pull them off really easily. However, with that being said, when there's a whole ton of them like this, it is super hard to actually cut through and actually break. So if you're worried about damaging a radiator by like, you know, knocking it a little bit, uh, don't be too worried. Be more worried about puncturing it because it's fairly easy to puncture. But as for trying to snap it in half, it was absolutely ridiculous. So. The actual design of these radiators are actually really, really awesome. And taking a look at some of these B-roll shots, actually really cool to see uh, one cut in half. Again, I would really have loved to slice it in half again so we get quarters. However, with that being said, I need to go out and borrow an angle grinder first before we actually go ahead and do that. But overall, uh, that is the radiator portion of this guy. Again, for all half of this guy is dedicated to flow in and the other half is for flow out. Now, unfortunately, this particular model doesn't have an arrow indicating which way is in and out, uh, but either way, it doesn't matter too much. And just taking a look at the rest of this guy, if we put the uh, radiator off to one side for just a moment, uh, we see that this design is actually fairly decent and the actual water cooling tubes is way bigger than uh, what we would expect. So if we just punch in here, a lot of us, when we come to custom water cooling, want to have the biggest channels possible for our water cooling tubes. However, with that being said, take a look in here, we can see where the water actually flows in there. We can just here and here. Um, basically, you it's really, really small. And if we flip around to this side and we can see here, the uh, actual um, uh, water out and water in or vice versa, they're really, really small. So just because you have smaller tubes doesn't mean you're going to get really bad temperatures. In fact, this kind of a setup right here with these super small openings, inlet and outlet, was running a Core i5 3570K and a Core i7 3770K third gen Core i5 unlocked. Um, basically, both of them were easy, able to overclock well past the 4.2 gigahertz mark on this particular water cooling. So just because it's a little bit on the small side doesn't matter too much. Now, on top of that, we also too got a little tiny fill port. I don't know if we're going to be able to see, but this little gap here is your fill port. And what I'm assuming is some sort of filter kind of thing. It just sort of 
sits in here. It's a piece of foam that's easy to squeeze water in and out of, and I'm assuming when the water passes through here, it gets a little bit of filtration out of the sky. Although, it's kind of a hard plastic, so a oh, hard sponge, so I'm not exactly sure how much filtration it's actually doing. We have the little impeller, which is our pump doohickey, which again is a good reminder not to run them dry because this little piece of silicon gaskety thing will, as I do break that, uh, will break quite a lot. And I think I just broke this thing, so uh, you're going to have to give me a minute while I put this thing back together. Actually, no. Oh, look at that. I, uh, yes, there we go. Put that in before it breaks any further. Other than that, the electronics on the back of this guy is also too pretty simple. We have our pump, motor, and jazz going on here. We have some basic PCB, which with this particular model has a temp sensor on this guy, and also too has an LED right here, which will also too uh, light up our Intel cooled by Acer Tech little doohickey thing, which also do comes with this really weird diffuser. So this uh, diffusion part here and this part here is designed to sit inside the Intel logo and thus diffuse the light, so it's evenly spread across this guy. I thought it was cool just how they didn't make one fogged piece of plastic. Instead, they used like a some sort of a sticker that is really easy easy to mark and damage, uh, but overall that's what they use there. And that's about it for the internals of one of these all-in-one water cooling units. And I guess that about wraps up this video. So with that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. And also too, I guess, let me know down in that comment section if you do want to see this thing quartered up. I also do have some plans to actually make this into a cool little, um, little exploded view diagram thingamabob with some like laser cut stuff. So do stay tuned for that. This will not be the last time you see this all-in-one water cooler. Again, otherwise guys, uh, if you want to check out this uh, uh, water cooler AIO thing more in detail, I'll leave some links down in the description box. Again, thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.